So here's something you don't see every day. I have an old radio. This would have been used by ground crews, firefighters, for forest fires, and smoke jumpers, the guys that jump out of airplanes into fire zones to fight the fire on the ground. It's an old obsolete radio. Let's take a look at the guts of it. This time we're gonna do a teardown on this old General Electric. This is an old portable radio. And this was used by the Forest Service for fire radios. It says, Forest Service fire only, looks like. JSJ number 10. This would have been given to field firefighters sometimes called smoke jumpers because they typically jumped out of airplanes and parachuted down into the forest to cut fire lines and so forth and they needed to have a way to communicate with water bombers and fire retardants and so forth um, uh, aircraft and they used a radio like this in fact there's a warning on here the warning sticker says air tanker and bird dog aircraft warbler sound like a yelping sound impeding retardant drop clear the area and take protective cover never take cover under a tree or a snag and then a siren is the all clear so this was clearly used by firefighters out in the field so that they would know when the airplane was coming to drop water or fire return and to get the hell out of dodge basically um, this I have no idea whether this works or not. It was given to me. I assume it probably does not work. Look at the old microphone on this. You now this is heavy duty. Push to talk button. Probably a crystal mic. Anyway, I figured this might be an interesting one to tear down. I have no intention of trying to get this thing running. Um, I don't even know what mode this radio is, whether it's FM or whether it's AM. It could be. It could very well be an AM radio for talking to the aircraft or FM but that I don't know all I know is it's got black rubber that's getting all over my hands from the rubber that's going rotten on the power cord on the microphone cord anyway I thought this might be an interesting one to tear down and see what exactly is inside this radio what it is and how well it's built because this thing's obviously pretty old with my kneecap I just cracked into the bench there ouch um anyway Let's uh, take it apart. Use external charger. So the charger would have plugged in there. This is the battery pack, obviously. And since this thing was designed for use out in the field under all types of conditions, everything is on here fairly tight. So that releases the clamp for the battery. Let's remove the battery and take a look at what it uses for batteries. It's probably gel cells. What is it? What has this got? Well, it's um, remove charging cable before opening unit. I think we'll open this first. What's in here? Is this a fuse? That's just a fuse. 12 volt, 5 amp, fast blow. First things first, let's open up this case see what's in here I'm curious whether they're lead acid or whether it's a nickel cadmium battery a ham radio buddy of mine gave me this radio a bunch, and a bunch of other stuff. It was part of his late father's collection, so he was just going through his his <coughs> late father's junk pile and was coming across all this stuff that was just going to go in the garbage. So he thought maybe this might be might be a nice uh, project to take apart and see what's in it. Okay, there's the power supply. It's got a couple big regulator transistors in here. More in it than I thought would be in here. It's got a couple big capacitors, fuse. There's a, a choke here, there's a light, that's probably for indicating it's charging. And the battery pack itself is right here. And it's a nickel cadmium battery, a great big sealed nickel cadmium battery. Check the double connectors on here. It's actually soldered down, but it's got a double plug 
and the, the uh, ground terminal is actually soldered right down. So they don't want any bad connections on this radio like this will probably be beat up in the field, get banged around a lot. So they actually attach that ground wire solidly. Same as on the battery. Now obviously this battery is going to be shot. It's a NICAD battery pack. We'll even, we'll even open this thing up. So I'm just going to cut the ground wire off from this. Let's uh, put a meter on here and see if there's any juice. There shouldn't be anything on this, this battery. It should be completely dead. And then we'll open this up and see what is in it as far as batteries go, as far as the cells. So positive terminal. A negative terminal it's got 0 0.7 volts so this thing is deader than dead and certainly would never charge up so it's interesting to see what type of cells are in here made in USA it's a 12 volt 4 amp hour battery and it says maximum charge rate 400 milliamps for 16 hours so it's not even that big a cell by today's standards, but back then this was probably a, a, a fairly fairly high capacity battery back when this thing was new. It's just covered in heat shrink tubing, so we'll just cut the heat shrink off, and then we can see the individual cells. Now obviously I made sure that the battery was completely dead before doing this because if the battery, if the cells were charged and something were to get shorted inside here, we could have a, a bit of a problem. But these cells being dead the way they are, there's not going to be any issues. I'm sure they're just cylindrical cells that are all connected in series with each other. And that's exactly what they want. No, they're actually, they're not. They're not cylindrical cells. These are, these are special cells. They're, well, they look like big capacitors. But there's 10 of them in series, as you can see. Now this stuff that's leaking out of this is pr probably not good to uh, to get on you. The, the, the chemicals leaking out of here. So these need do need to be recycled for sure. But that's the internal structure. As you can see, it's just two banks of five cells stacked in uh, series with each other. There are the cells there. Spot welded together. So those are going to go for recycling. I'm just going to uh, put these in the plastic bag so they can send them off for recycling and we'll kind of can decontaminate the workbench here. On closer inspection, this might have two cells in parallel inside it. Let's see before I scrap them. Let's just see if I can open this up and see if there's two cells in here or whether it is just one cell. It might just be one cell. I guess it is just one cell. I thought maybe at first from the look of it here that there might be two cells inside a container, but I guess not. I guess it is, this was actually a custom cell. Unless the top comes off and there's two cells that are there, but nope. This is this is a single cell. So this was, this was a custom type cell. I've never seen cells like this. Maybe someone knows. But they're off to recycling. All right, hazardous chemicals have been dealt with. You believe me, don't you? They're all sealed up in a bag and they're going to the battery re recycling place. Because, uh, well, we can't throw batteries in the, in the garbage here. We have to, um, what do I need that for? I'll throw that away. They have to go to uh, the recycling center. Just like light bulbs and other stuff that has to be uh, disposed of correctly. I will keep that fuse. The fuse is a 5 amp fuse. I'm sure it's fine, so I'm going to be keeping that. And the rest of the radio, well, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. We're going to take it apart though, because I want to see what the rest of the radio looks like, how well it's built and stuff. I don't really have much use for it. If it turns out that it's a crystal controlled radio and it's FM, then maybe it could be converted for ham radio use. 
and um, so I won't be destroying the radio itself because a lot of times these old radios are converted into things like repeaters and so forth. The radio itself is usually pretty pretty good. So this was a Canadian General Electric, made in Canada, I guess. Was it made in Canada? Yeah, made in Canada. There you go. Battery was made in USA. This was made in Canada. So the unit itself is probably top quality. I mean, it would have to be because these were these were abused. If these were tossed around and you know they were used out in the field. So I'm sure there's probably a lot of waterproofing here. It looks like there's rubber gaskets between the battery pack and the the radio itself. There's a rubber gasket right here. This is probably all sealed up and I'm going to have a hell of a time getting it apart. Oh, you know what? The top comes off. Oh, wow. How's that for easy serviceability? It just lifts right out. One screw, one screw, and there's the boards. Okay, so here's the internal works. It's crystal controlled, obviously. And that circuit board looks to be really robust. One of these boards is probably the transmitter board and the other one is the receiver board. This is going to be the power amp, I'm sure. It's probably the final right there, I'm thinking. Yeah, PA supply, pin 6. So this is the power amplifier. Well, here's our crystals over here. There's two more crystals on this side. I wonder what they're for. I bet you this is going to be the receiver, I think. So these are going to be the receive crystals, local oscillator for one and for the other. But here's your oscillator. Uh, this is a receiver. Uh, because it's a separate board for the receiver and the transmitter, something like this would be perfect for turning into a uh, two meter repeater with the proper crystals because you've got your receiver board here right and on the other side you've got the transmitter board and here's the transmit crystals over here now 163 T830 so it's 163.830 and this one's 163.125 that's the frequency that's the transmit frequency these ones do they say the same this one's 163.83 and 163.995 so that's the frequency so the transmit frequency on this would be 163.125 and 163.83 looking at the crystals uh, 163.83 163.125 uh, is a transmit crystal and then there's a receive crystal 163.83 and a 163.995 so one of them is going to be like a repeater repeater channel and the other one would be a uh, or duplex channel and the other one would be a uh, simplex channel so the reason they do that duplex and simplex uh, channels is so that uh, when you're talking right when you're when you're in transmit mode you can receive at the same time so so if, if our transmitter was on um, base station could call back if someone had their transmitter open so typically they're transmitting on one frequency up to the aircraft and they're listening on another one coming back but they don't hear each other they only hear right that way if a radio if someone's making a call right when you're on a duplex channel if someone's making a call they're not occupying the frequency that so no one else can hear it so the guys out in the field if they're if they're talking um, between one radio and another they're on the talk channel on the simplex channel so they only one person can talk at a time but if they're talking to the say the dispatch they'd be on the other channel. The dispatch transmits on one frequency, receives on another. That way the dispatcher can be giving instructions and while they're talking, someone could break in and start talking and they, the dispatcher would hear them. And of course, if they had a repeater, which typically they would, whatever is received on that would get transmitted out for everybody else. So it's got a simplex and a, a, a repeater frequency. But being an, an independent uh, radio like this, this is the perfect type radio that, that radio amateurs will turn into a repeater. And I'm going to hang on to this for that. I could turn this into a repeater, just get some crystals made for a different frequency. Or sell it at a ham fest because this is the type of radio that 
a lot of the hams would use just because it's an independent transmitter and an independent receiver. We remove those screws and it hinges open like that. So here's your, your relay which would switch between transmit and receive. It's got a Pioneer speaker in it and your audio adjustments. Got some cavities in here. Anyway, I'm not going to really rip this thing apart much more than this. There's, there's not really much else to see. Just the, just the circuit boards. There's not really anything to see on the bottom of the board here. All the adjustments are on the top. But as you can see, the, the circuit boards appear to be very well made. You know, all the components have all been inserted and soldered down. It's a double-sided board. It's plated through. Uh, something like this lasts forever. It's built like a tank. Everything's all sealed up. You see all around all the controls. They've all got like a potting compound around all the screws and around all the controls so that if it's out in the rain, it's not going to get wet. There's a seal. There's a rubber seal here and it's a lip over top of it so to keep the to keep moisture out of it so even in extreme conditions op operating out in the rain or you know under having water dropped on on them from above if the radio is outside um, the radio is going to stay dry so very good construction I'm going to throw this unit back together because this was just kind of a take this thing apart and show you guys the inside of it and um, Maybe I'll pass this on to somebody who wants to turn it into a repeater. A few years ago, I probably would have done that, but uh, I had a repeater years and years ago. Early on when I had my license, I had a UHF repeater, but I shut it down probably a dozen years ago now. Couldn't be bothered. goes together like that with just one screw and then I'll put the base back on even though it doesn't do anything the battery is all corroded and shot I'll throw the base back on it and uh, we'll call this one done but a neat old radio made in Toronto by Canadian General Electric for the fire service volume and power and squelch and a light that lights up when you're transmitting. Just screw the antenna in, plug in the microphone and you're good to go. Thanks for watching. If anybody watching is interested in this radio, well, I'm going to sell it. If it's used to you, make me an offer. Thanks for watching.